Amen. Praise the Lord. How many of y'all have a made up mind tonight? We're going forward. Going forward with Jesus. Paul said this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind. He said I press toward the mark. We have a mark. We have a prize. We have somewhere we're going. Let's just keep going. Let's just keep going. We're going to get there. Keep walking in the same direction God wants you to go. And uh, <coughs> 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 we'll come for we all the way there, right? We'll make it. <coughs> Lord Jesus. Or, uh, excuse me, folks. Help me, Lord Jesus. <coughs> Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house of God tonight, and I wish you all a safe and happy 4th of July tomorrow. And I don't know what we are doing yet. <laughs> we have no plans whatsoever. Probably come crash somebody's party, I guess. <laughs> right? But um, I want to read to you tonight from the Gospel of Mark. Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. He said, And again he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noised that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together, insomuch that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. Isn't that wonderful? What did Jesus do? He didn't tell them a good story, a joke. He just preached the word. Right? He gave them the word, the thing that he needed the most, the word of God. <clears throat> and help me, Lord. And they, and they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sin sins be forgiven thee. <clears throat> and I want to use verse 4 as a text for tonight. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. And I want to use that there where these men, as they were coming to bring their friend or whoever this man was, to Jesus. They came up to an obstacle, and instead of uh, turn around and go back home, they just look for another way to get to Jesus. And so that's what we want to preach about tonight is don't turn around. Don't, <coughs> excuse me, please bear with me tonight. This thing is really bad right now. Don't turn around. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Marvin, would you help me? Would you pray? <coughs> I want to preach about don't turn around. And the idea is this. I'm sure <coughs> all of us here at one time or another, we went out with the intention to go do something, whether it was to go wash your car at a car wash or go to Costco to get some gas or go get some fried chicken or something, whatever it is. And you go out there and you saw this long line. And what, you, what, what did you do? You turned around and went back home. <laughs> you miss out on that blessing. <laughs> you miss out on that blessing because you didn't have the patience to wait. <laughs> We've all been there you know, many times. Many times we pull up to a place and like, man, this line is too long. I'm not going there. And we've all been there at one time or another in our life. And that's uh, the idea in which I'm preaching about don't turn around. You're on, you're on your way to get something, get it. You're on your way to do something, do it. These men, as they brought their friend to Jesus, they could easily turn around and go back home when they saw the press. 
When I saw all the people there, they saw all the multitudes of, of people pressing just to hear the word of God and just to get close to Jesus. They could have said, you know what, there's just too many people here. We're never going to get to Jesus. Why waste our time? Let's come back another day. Let's come back a different time, maybe when the crowd is smaller, maybe we can just get, get, er, we can get up early like you go to the DMV, right? You get up early in the morning <coughs> and you try to beat everybody there and you get there and realize a hundred people had the same idea you had and you're still waiting in line no matter what, right? And so maybe they thought, they could have thought, you know, or they could have reasoned that way that maybe we can come back another day, but you see, they didn't do that. They, they were a different set of people with a different mentality was, if I can't get to him one way, I'm going to sure try another way. I'm not going to turn around and go back without getting my blessing from the Lord. I'm not going to turn around and, and not pursue what God wants out of my life. I am going to keep moving forward. Amen. And so they came, they came to where this place was and, they, and they, they realized, wait a minute. Yes, there may be an obstacle, but that doesn't mean I have to stop. And in life, there will be a lot of obstacles that doesn't mean we have to stop. As one man shared, if you go into the store and there's some speed, there's some speed bumps on the way, you're not going to turn around and go back the opposite direction. You're never going to get to the store. There might be a pothole or two or three. That doesn't mean you have to quit going in the direction that you need to go in and turn around and say, well, uh, I'm just going to give up. I'm just not going to go all together. I'm just going to turn around and go back home and pout all the way. That, that, that there are so many obstacles in the way that, that I can't get to, to where I wanted to go. So the message is tonight, don't turn around. You know what God wants out of your life. You know what you need from the Lord. Just keep going. Don't let the obstacles stop you. Don't let the difficulty, the trial, don't let the failure, don't let the shortcomings stop you. Keep going forward. Amen. Keep going forward. You say, well, I pray and it didn't happen. Pray again. The Bible said Elijah, he, he, Elijah was a man subject to passion, to like passion as we are. And he prayed and it rained not. And he prayed again. Sometimes we need to pray again. Sometimes we need to get back on our, on our knees and just call on God one more time saying, Lord, it didn't happen the first time or it didn't happen the first five times. I'm going to pray again until God do something. I'm not going to turn around and go back. If I know God wants something out of my life, Oh, I know there is something I need from God and it's right before the Lord. I will pursue it until I get it. Amen. Yes. Don't turn around. Just keep going in the direction God wants you to go. Keep going in the direction God wants you to go. Obstacles doesn't mean you have to stop. Obstacle doesn't mean that you have to give up and quit. Obstacle doesn't mean that you have to just say it's worthless or it's of no use. Obstacle just means you have to you know, get a little tougher and just keep moving forward or start thinking a little bit different and move forward in the direction that God wants you to go. The Bible said here this man was sick with a palsy and palsy was a condition that, that causes people to, to shake uncontrollably. They, they had an involuntary shaking and there are different kinds. You know, there are different kinds of palsy. You know, but cerebral palsy, there is bell palsy, there's a different kind of palsy, a, a whole different... Uh, a whole um, group of different kind of policy, and whichever one this man had, we don't know. But nevertheless, it didn't matter to his friends. All they saw was someone had a need for Jesus. Someone needed a touch. Someone needed Jesus. Amen? Someone needed Jesus. How many times we try to help people, and they don't seem like they want, want you to help them. And, you know, you're trying to get them to God, trying to tell them this is the way, trying to show them by your life, hey, Serving God, it pays to serve God, but they don't want to do it. Well, we can't just turn around and say, well, I'm not going to reach out to anybody else. They may not want, but there will be somebody else who do. Amen? There might be someone else just waiting, waiting, wondering, oh, I've tried everything else, and, and nothing works, and then all of a sudden you come and give them an invitation, or tell them about God, invite them to church, or, or whatever, and, and then they say, well, let, let me give God a try. 
Let me give God a try. Instead of giving up and saying nothing works, let me give God a try. And they do, and they allow the Lord to come into their heart and change them. And then they can sing that song that she was singing, I have been changed by the power of God. I don't want to go back to the ways of the world. I don't want to go back to sin. God changed me. And, and I don't want to turn around and, and go away from the Lord. I want to keep going in the direction that God is leading me and calling me. Amen? <clears throat> don't give up. Don't give up. Don't turn around is a, is a message. Don't turn around. Let the obstacle, or don't let the obstacles stop you. These men were determined to see their friend get the help he needed. And they did whatever it took. The Bible said when they couldn't get to him because of the press, they just went up on the rooftop. I don't know if they knew the person whose house that was or what. I don't know if they... You know, they probably didn't think it through. They just said, well, we got to get to Jesus. We're not going to turn around and go back. We have come too far to go back. Amen? Amen? We have come too far. We have brought this man. We carried him all the way from where he was to where Jesus is. We are not going to turn around without getting a blessing from the Lord. I wish more of us were like that. Amen? We're not going to turn around until I get a blessing from the Lord. I'm not going to turn around and go back because the line is too long. I'm not going to turn around because there are too many people waiting on God, too many people calling on God, too many people praying and bombarding heaven. I'm not going to turn around and say, well, uh, maybe I'll come another day. No, if I need God today, I need God today. If I need a touch from God right now, that's what I need. If I need God to help me, to open a door for me, or to cause a situation to change, then that's exactly what I need. And I'm not going to turn around and go and, and go away because there's too much uh, uh, things in the way or too many obstacles in the way or too great of a mountain in the way. No, I'm not going to turn around. I'm going to keep going forward if I know I need it from the Lord. Amen? If I know I need it from the Lord. And there's a lot of times we have needs in our life. We have needs in our life uh, but our passion is not great enough to get that need met. Our passion is not great enough to pour our heart and soul out to the Lord, to receive what we need. These men, they went up, they climbed up on the roof, and, and they took their friend up there too, and they began to tear the roof apart. I don't know what kind of roof they had back then, but they began to pull it apart. Maybe it was something easy that they could you know, rip apart. I don't know. They probably didn't have all the fancy things we have today. You know, the plywood and then the paper and then the shingle. They didn't probably have all that. They probably had a different kind of roofing back then. And so they rip it apart and they begin to let the friend down. Wouldn't it have been easier for them to just turn around and go back home? Wouldn't it have been easier for them to just say, well, man, this line is way too long. I got to wait, what, two hours to get into <laughs> Outback Steakhouse? That's the reason why I don't go to Outback Steakhouse. <laughs> I don't even know when the last time I went there. Probably 20 years ago, I don't know. <clears throat> don't even care to go there. Because <coughs> every time I tried, the line was long. <clears throat> but it would have been so much easier to turn around and go back home. You pull into that line, and you know you need the gas, or whatever you need. And you see it, you're like, man, it's so much easier to just turn around and go back. The message tonight is don't turn around. It's easy to do that. It's easy to turn around. It takes some effort. It takes some courage. And it takes some work to keep going forward. Amen? And so the message is just keep going forward. Don't turn around. Don't turn around and go back. Just keep going forward. Whatever it takes, they were willing to climb up to the roof, tear it apart so that their friend can get to Jesus. Don't let anything keep you from getting what you need from God. We have to be determined. We can't give up too easily. We can't give up too easily. Sometimes we pray and we give up too quickly. Sometimes things doesn't work out the first time and we give up too quickly. Instead of just saying, let me back off and take another look at it and try a different way. Amen. We can't give up too easily. You know, if, you know, if it's God, if, God, if it's of God, then, and it's right before the Lord, then God's going to bless it. Amen. 
If it's right and it's of God and you know God is not going to frown upon something like that, then you know he's going to bless it. So don't give up. Don't give up. Keep moving forward. We have to be willing. They were willing to climb. They were willing to work. They were willing to, to do whatever it takes uh, in spite of all the people that were watching on and saying, what are you guys doing? Are you crazy? You can't climb up on this man's roof. You can't go up there and take somebody. What if you drop him? He, he might sue you. He needed help. <laughs> all right? He needed help. He needed to get to God. And, and so they didn't let anything stop them. They were determined and they were willing to do whatever it took. And they were bold also. They risked their life doing this. One of them could have fall. One of them could have, you know, could have hurt himself in the process. But it didn't matter. It didn't matter. They didn't want the easy way. They didn't want to just turn around and carry their friend all the way back to his place and set him there at his house just the way he was before. They said, we are going to get a blessing from God. Our friend is going to be healed. Our friend is going to get a touch from Jesus. And the Bible said when Jesus saw them letting this man down, they saw, he saw their faith. He saw what they were willing to do. And he told the man, he said, thy sins be forgiven thee. Thy sins be forgiven thee. And then he touched him and he healed him. You know the story. He healed him. What are the ants doing in church? He healed him. He healed the man because the, he saw that his friends were unwilling to turn around and go back home. And because he saw that, the Bible said he healed them tonight. Don't let the obstacles stop you. Don't let those obstacles stop you. Obstacles come up for, for reasons. Like I shared this morning, if, if the devil is fighting you, then you know you're doing something good. And a lot of times obstacles come from the devil. He doesn't like when people's Life are blessed by the Lord, so he will stir up anything he can to create an obstacle or a hindrance to keep us from receiving what we need from God. It's called spiritual warfare. You all know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Y'all listening to me tonight? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're not tuning me out, right? You're not ready to go to bed, go to sleep yet? <laughs> I'll be done in just a little bit. I'm talking about don't turn around. You came for a reason. Get what you came for. Amen. You go to that place for a reason. Get what you go for. Don't turn around. When we turn around and go back, then we kill every opportunity there is to get what we needed. Amen. And so it is with God also. When we turn around, instead of digging and pray and get that, uh, get that, uh, that, that blessing that we need, whatever it is, sometimes uh, we need blessings of different sort. We may need some assurance from God. Amen. We may need some peace from God. Man, something was really troubling me last week. Stealing my peace for no reason. And I, I could share, uh, sitting there, I mean, really messing with my mind. And, and, uh, and it was just the devil. And then God plays that message in my heart. The spirit of faith. <laughs> I said, well, Lord, maybe that's what I needed. I needed this battle to get this message. Because I was sitting there wondering what I should preach about, thinking what I should preach about. Nothing is coming. All the while, Satan was messing with my mind about something all week, just trying to take my joy, trying to take my peace. And as soon as that, that thought or that word came to my heart about, uh, about the spirit of faith, all of a sudden, peace came to my life. Peace came to my soul. And I said, okay, Lord, this is it. I need that spirit of faith. I need that spirit of faith. We can't just turn back. We can't just turn around. Amen. We can't just look at the crowd. We can't look at the obstacle. We can't just look at the challenge or look at the difficulty and say, it is way too much for me to give and turn around and go back empty. Get what you want from the Lord. Amen. Pray it to the, pray it just like Elijah. Pray again. Get Get the blessing of the Lord. The devil, he will try to mess with you to create this spiritual warfare, to raise up these obstacles, uh, to get you to doubt God, to get you to, to, to doubt your, your own walk with God sometimes and your own steadfastness in the Lord. But realizing, turn around and go back uh, is not going to get the job done. Just keep moving forward, praying, seeking the Lord and getting what you need from the Lord. Amen. So the devil creates obstacles. Lack of faith also creates those obstacles. You see, faith as we know, faith is the key. Faith is the key to, to unlock all the things of God. And the Bible tells us in James 1, 6 and 7, he said, But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. 
For he that wavereth is like the wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. These men didn't waver when they brought their friend to Jesus. They're like, he need Jesus to touch him. We're going to find a way to get him to Jesus. Like I said, it's easy to turn around and go back. Let's not turn around. Let's just keep going where God wants to go. Amen. In faith, believe in the Lord. <clears throat> God will, <clears throat> excuse me, God will help us <clears throat> when we show those determination in our life, in our spiritual life. When we show those determination that we are willing to press on. We're willing to move forward. We're willing to go the extra mile. Even though it may seem difficult and challenging, and even though it may seem so much ahead of us, when we show God that we're willing to move forward with Him, God will bless us. Amen? God will make a way. God will make a way. It wasn't until Israel decided that they were getting ready, that they will cross the Jordan, that God opened up the waters for them. The Bible says as soon as the feet of the priest touched the water, God opened it up. Amen? God opened it up and they walked across on dry land and went over there and walked around the walls of Jericho. And finally, God threw the walls down and they destroyed that city because uh, it would have been easy for them to turn around and go back. And that was Israel's problem, isn't it? Every time they come up to, a, to, a, to, a, to an obstacle, what was their attitude? Let's go back to Egypt. Let's turn around and go back to Egypt. They always want to turn around. <laughs> Every time something come up, no water, let's go back to Egypt. No food, let's go back to Egypt. Uh, the journey is too long, let's go back to Egypt. Every time a problem arises, every time an obstacle presents itself, they always want to turn around and go back. And, and God, because of that kind of attitude, they didn't even get a chance to enter the promised land. God let them all die in the wilderness because they had that attitude of always wanting to turn around and go back. Let's not turn around. The message tonight is don't turn around. Because of the obstacle, don't turn around. It's easy. Just keep going forward. James 1, 7 said, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. And cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, not a shadow of turning. Tonight, I'm preaching about don't turn around. Using the illustration of uh, income distribution, using the illustration of uh, when you see something difficult, a long line, uh, 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 when you know you need to do something, but there's too much in front of you to get it done, it's always easier to turn around and go the opposite direction. It's always easier to say, you know what, I'll do it another day. It's always easier to say, well, maybe another time would be better. Not knowing that that probably is the right time to do it. Amen? Who knows whether or not Jesus would have, this man would have had another chance to get to where Jesus was. Because he's always on the move. He's always on the move. And who knew whether or not his friend would have had another opportunity to bring him to Jesus to receive his healing. But because it did not turn around and go back, they went against all common sense will say, turn around, turn around. It's a waste of time. There's too many people there. The reasoning in your mind will say, turn around. Let's go back home. There's too many people. You'll never get to Jesus. You'll never be able to get to where Jesus is. There's just too many people. Too many people in front of you. Too many people in the way. Too, too hard to get to, where, to get to where Jesus is. All the reasoning could say, well, this is the, the smart thing to do. But his friend said, no. No, no, our friend needs Jesus right now. This man needs Jesus right now. We're going to find another way. And they did. And you know the end of the story. Jesus healed the man and stirred up everybody in that, in that area. Caused the Pharisees to get some heartburn. <laughs> because... He forgive the man's sin and heal him at the same time. And so the message tonight is, don't let the 
obstacles in your way cause you to turn around. Find another way if you have to, but just keep going in the direction that God wants you. Get what you need from God. Don't turn around and go back. It's easy to do that. Go against all the all, all against all, all things that are coming and trying to hinder you and just follow in the way that the Lord will have you. Amen. As you bow your heads and close your eyes tonight in reverence to the Lord. <clears throat> it's easy to turn around and go back because of the length of the line or the number of the people or the difficulty of the situation. It's easy to turn around. But the message tonight is don't turn around. Don't turn around. Don't miss out on your blessing by turn, taking the easy way. Turn around and go back. Amen. She's going to spend some time in prayer tonight. <clears throat> to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Thank God we had Sunday night service. Amen. Amen. We'll get back from full swing. Bear with me. We'll get over all this nonsense and just keep moving forward in God and God will help us. Amen. God help us. Remember the message.
Don't let the obstacle stop you. Don't turn around. It's easy to do that. Amen? Just pray, God, help me to find a different way. To conquer this, this mountain or whatever it is that I have to do. And enjoy the goodness of the Lord. And so I pray you have a wonderful 4th of July. Safe 4th of July. And God bless you for all of you who join us online. Have a safe weekend or a 4th, 4th of July celebration. We appreciate you worshiping with us. May God continue to bless you as you look to Him doing the will of the Lord. God bless you. Let's close it in prayer. Father, thank you for this time to be in your house. We honor you. We bless you and praise you. We thank you for your kindness. Thank you, Lord, for working miracles every day in our life. Thank you for providing and protecting us in all things we do. We give thanks to you. We ask God you keep your hand upon us over this week and help us to continue to follow in the way that the Spirit will lead us. Guide us and lead us in your way. In Jesus' name we pray.